Modern life dictates its own rules. We have to be mobile if we are to keep up with the pace at all times. Nowadays, the most popular way for long distance travel is by railway, apart from air travel, that is. And the primary function and the movement of the train in any given route is performed by the electric motor. However, the task may become tricky if the motor fails. To avoid this from happening, you want to examine this complex mechanism regularly. You are watching, within the process, a program which brings you detailed information about products manufactured under the brand made in Kazakhstan. Today, the lenses of our cameras are focused on the process of traction motors reconstruction. Just look at this multitude of motors that are awaiting their fate. From all over Kazakhstan, motors are brought to Almaty where they're given a second life. The process of purification and restoration of the traction motors involves a lot of hard work. It takes more than just one day to take a worn motor and turn it into one that looks like this. But the time and labor costs involved in the process are completely justified. Before starting the renewal of the engine, all units are delivered into the dismantling department. Piece by piece, a technician dismantles this complex mechanism to the very base and then the most interesting part begins. In technology, some parts are attached extremely tightly. They can only be removed after the motor casing is heated. Under the influence of temperature, the metal expands and releases. Some parts can be removed under pressure. There are parts that can be removed only by applying brute mechanical force. An electric motor consists of more than 100 parts. To avoid confusion, a specialist uses the long-established procedure to remove canopies, rivets and blocks, stacking them neatly on a stand. Later, it will be used to build this piece back. Once the motor is exposed and stripped of all its autonomous mechanisms, another specialist takes over. He uses ordinary tools, a hammer and a knife switch, to remove the suit. Traction motors are responsible for the running of the locomotive wheel sets, and in addition to external contaminants, there are also external ones, mazut, oil and soot. Therefore, physical cleaning is the first and necessary step before the big wash. When soot and oil residues are removed, the motor is transported in the washing department. The weight of individual parts of the engine cannot exceed 1,000 kilograms. They are moved with the help of special mobile cranes. These cleaning machines are from the United States of America. There is no equivalent of this cutting-edge equipment there in Kazakhstan, or in the entire CIS for that matter. Factory workers often joke that they can count the countries that use this technology to clean their engines with the fingers of just one hand, and Kazakhstan is on this honor list. General wash takes place in this purifying cabinet. Hundreds of jets wash the unit from different angles. The peculiarity of this washing technique is in the special detergents used in the direction of the fluid. For this type of wash, three types of alkyne solutions are used, and they are all used alternately. One cleans the engine, another prevents the formation of foam, and the third prevents rust from appearing in future operating practice of the motor. After the first cleaning, the motor is transported to the second wash cabinet. Here it will be cleaned in the same way that it was cleaned the first time, but this time around the process involves the application of hot air to eliminate all traces of oil. The next step is the drying process, which will take place in a hot bath at a temperature of 80 degrees. At this stage, the engine's core is rid of water and cleaning agents. While our engine is being washed, let's go back to the beginning of the process, the dismantling of the engine. Now the technician disassembles the motor into a number of components, the anchor, bearing seals, covers, pole coils and brush holders. Simply put, the electric generator and the bearings are removed from the engine, and while pure metal is washed with chemical solutions, the generator is cleaned in a completely different way. Before the big wash, the electric machine is separated from the copper, antonine, through which electrical current passes when the shaft rotates. Afterwards, the only thing left to do is cleanse it from mazut. Once the generator is dismantled, the basic unit is sent to blast cleaning. For security purposes, the technician has to wear a special suit. It protects from small particles which are used to clean the generator. 
Through a special hose, the worker gets a supply of fresh air. Surprisingly, the process of blast cleaning does not involve the application of sand or stones. Fraction bits of apricot pits are used instead. Under the pressure of four and a half atmospheres, the pits make a fine cleaning agent that eliminates even rust. After such a scrub treatment, the generator looks much better. And in the meantime, in the electrical units department, the parser mechanic removes the conductors. He also checks the condition of the copper conductors. In case of malfunction, they are sent to the section department. There, all defects will be fixed and the unit will be returned here. When the electrical machinery is assembled, its ability to generate electric current is checked. The engine is set to begin to generate electricity just like during the motion of the train. The tester performs measurements. One revolution of the wheel should produce the exact amount of electricity, and if everything is accurate, the electric motor is then taken away to be reunited with the core engine, which, after through washing and drying, is transported right into the hands of fastening specialists. The main thing in their work is to determine the possibility of output in the seams after the lid has been removed from the engine box. Besides, it is necessary to check all openings. If the carving is damaged or the shape of the seams has changed in any place, the motor will be sent for welding. The technician welds a small amount of metal on each output. Afterwards, the carving in the metal will be restored and it will be adjusted to the size of the bolt. The last department involved in the process of electric motor reconstruction is the varnish and lubrication shop. Once the core engine is upgraded and the basic units have been arranged in the engine box, they are covered with varnish. The peculiarity of this process is in the varnishing technology. This unit is from the USA. Once the core engine is inside and the lid is closed, the lubrication of the unit begins to take place in a vacuum. It is no longer required to dilute the enamel or wash the motor with solutions. It is all done by the computer. All we have to do to start the process is enter the required parameters. Ten minutes later, the core engine covered with enamel is placed in an oven for drying. Here, powerful jets of air heated to 90 degrees dry the enamel. The oily mass is fastened with the metallic surface of the engine, thus isolating its parts from external factors. Once all parts have been washed and oiled and the defective components have been replaced, the engine is assembled in the reverse order. Anchor, core, bearing mechanisms and covers are arranged in their proper places. Traction mechanism is then placed on a special stand in order to detect deviations in its alignment. In other words, the wheel which rotates inside should be directly perpendicular to the engine. Possible variations are permissible within hundredths of a millimeter. After new life has been breathed into the motor, it is returned to its proper workplace. And again, it will continue to ensure smooth operation of the trains and supply huge processions of cars with power. It will also give passengers the assurance that the train will not stop at any unfamiliar place at the wrong hour. You are watching within the process a program that brings you detailed information about products manufactured under the brand made in Kazakhstan and inspires a fresh perspective on things that surround us in everyday life. My name is Dmitry Galabir. And I am Daniyar Patrbaev. See you at the next episode of Within the Process.